before we start talking about the move scale, well, offset scale and rotate deformers, we're going to give us something to work with. So I'm going to go into the tool palette here, go into Cube 3D, drag it onto my canvas, go into edit mode, and let's go ahead and we can turn on polyframe, make poly mesh 3D, and I'm going to go to BI, brush insert, uh, B, insert multi mesh boolean, I'm going to hit M, and I'm just going to grab one of these, we'll take that switch, and we'll drag it out on our canvas here, go to subtool, split, we'll go to split mass points, and I'm going to drop this one here underneath with this bent arrow. So now I have a cube as my first subtool, this one as my new subtool. I'm going to make this a subtractive mesh, turn on live boolean, and now when I turn off polyframe you're going to see we have this live boolean uh, cutting into our mesh. I'm going to rotate this kind of at an arbitrary angle, scale it up arbitrarily, and just kind of position it in our mesh. To get rid of that faceting you can go down here to geometry, dynamic subdiv, turn on dynamic, and now it's nice and smooth. In order to create a boolean mesh out of this, so that's not just a uh, a representation of the boolean but it's actually baked into the geometry what we can do is we can go down here to the subtool submenu of boolean make sure dynamic subdivision is turned on because we've used it hit make boolean mesh that'll keep everything nice and smooth and then we now have if you go up here to this u mesh in our tool palette this is our boolean mesh together now let's say we wanted to put an object uh, into this space and do it precisely. What we can do is we can go ahead, let's do an append, and we'll append a cylinder 3D. Now when we append a cylinder, it automatically makes it a poly mesh 3D, even though it was a primitive previously. So you don't need to worry about going up here and hitting make poly mesh 3D. So we have our cylinder in here. If you go into transparency mode, you can see it's just right inside that cube bounding box. And before we do anything, let's hit solo. Let's hit W, go into polyframe, and I'm before we start using, again, offset, rotate, and scale, I'm going to do an extender, and with this extender one, I'm just going to make this a little bit of an oblong shape here. So if you uh, haven't watched the extender videos, you can go to my YouTube channel, go to my playlist, and under ZBrush 48, what's new, we talk about the extender deformation. But anyway, we like this. I'm going to go back into the gear, hit accept, and now I want to move, scale, and rotate. Let's turn off solo mode. We want to move, scale, and rotate this object into a precise position over here. Now instead of using my gizmo over here, because you can use your gizmo to like hold down shift and you can snap, snap to increments and you can scale these things and you can move and you can rotate uh, like so. However, if I decide, you know what, that didn't quite work for me, I have to do multiple undos just to get back to my original starting point. If you go in here and you say we would go ahead and accept our extender deformation, go back in here and now you can, for example, go into the rotate deformer and now you can hold down shift and that'll snap the five degree increments here so we can go hold down shift and go ahead and snap it here we can grab this one hold down shift and snap it to this angle here snap it to 90 and then finally we can grab this outside one here and we can position that as needed now of course on this one it was an arbitrary angle so we can just roughly get that in and I'm going to switch over here and we're going to go to scale now with scale you can scale along individual axes here and you're also going to notice our bounding box is offset from our object. That's another useful feature that can come with this deformer here. So if we go here and we hop back out to our Gizmo 3D and I hold down Alt, we can reposition our Gizmo to go along this axis. Or if you want to, if you go into solo mode here, you can hold down W. Just Alt click on your object. That'll automatically find the surface normal that it wants to uh, set to. And if you hold down Alt, you can also snap it to Unmesh Mesh Center as well. Once you've done that, you can hop back in here go back into your scale deformer and now you can see our bounding box is now set to our object. So being able to arbitrarily set your bounding box to deform along these axes, axes is also pretty useful. But like I said, if we go out of solo mode here, we can scale it down this way, make it a little bit thinner. I'm going to hop back out and we're just going to uniformly scale this down. And then once that's positioned, we can accept and we can just continue going through here. If you go into the offset deformer here, you can use these arrows to push these in or out. Let's go ahead and turn off transparency mode. And you can push along this axis. And again, that's just controlled by what orientation your gizmo is at. So you can very precisely go ahead and just place this thing as needed. And if you decide, you know, you've messed up, instead of undoing a bunch of times, just go up here and hit delete. That'll go ahead and snap you back. And now you can go ahead and hop back in here. And again, do your offset scale. We'll go back into rotate here. Let's say we want to put like a little paddle switch in here so we can just go ahead and rotate this back and then we'll hop back over here. We'll go to offset and we'll just pull this down. We can kind of fit it in here and we'll go back into scale and we can just scale it non-uniformly along this axis here. So you can use these new deformers here to very precisely 
fit all these things. And again, if you want to undo that last one, you can just go to delete and it'll snap you back to your original position. One more thing I want to mention about scale. If you go grab just a cylinder polymesh 3D, make polymesh 3D, I should say, cylinder primitive, make polymesh 3D, hit W. You're going to have your gizmo here. When you hold down, when you just scale non-uniformly with this green scale right here, what you can do is you can touch the scale and then hold down alt and that'll scale it along this axis as well. So any of these will actually scale non-uniformly along this axis. So you can either scale non-uniformly like this, or you can tap the scale box and then hold down alt and it'll skew along that ed, uh, angle. Same thing with the Y direction. And usually it's the Y direction I do this. I start scaling and then hold down alt and that'll scale it in and out along that axis. Alternatively, if you want to, you can go into your Z modeler brush, B, Z, M, and then go into your polygroup menu, do group by normals. And now you can hover over face, do Q mesh, polygroup all. And then as you're Q meshing out, just hold down shift and it'll push along that surface normal. That won't work in every case, but in this case, it'll do uh, very much a very similar thing.